Well, hello, everybody, and this is our time now to open God's Word, to preach God's truth, and we're brought together. We are together around the truth of Scripture each week, just like we were in buildings, but we're right here in your home, a thousand, tens of thousand points of light around the world, many people watching in multiple countries and across the United States, and of course, our own Preston Wood family, the church uh, together. And uh, what an incredible experience this is for me. Nothing like it. As a matter of fact, this is a first time for me because uh, actually I'm preaching to an empty room. Over the years, I've never rehearsed my sermons in advance. I've never preached to an empty room or to a mirror. But now I'm in an empty room and it's a preacher's worst (laughs) nightmare. You know, you prepare and no one shows up. In fact, if you just look around right here, just turn that camera around right here, and I'm going to show you what I'm looking at today. Just a bunch of empty chairs, and uh, it sort of feels like one of those apocalypse movies or the twilight zone for me, or maybe the rapture happened and I missed it. I was left behind. Well, here we are, and yet I know that on the other side of this camera right here, There are many people, thousands of people, literally, opening God's Word, and the church is alive and well, and together we're going to get through these days, no matter how long they may last, we're going to stay strong together, we are going to grow together, we are going to be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ together. Now, the title of this message that we're bringing is, We Are In This Together. Now, of course, the this is COVID-19, the coronavirus. And the coronavirus is sweeping the world. And there have been thousands of cases worldwide. In fact, 230,000 cases worldwide of COVID-19 and uh, over 10,000 deaths. Right here in the United States, 14,000 plus known cases and so far 217 deaths. And many have the virus and don't even know it. And many have the virus and you know it right now. And therefore, because we want to slow the spread of this virus and ultimately see it stop in America and around the world here in our country, we are, uh, we are reducing our, and restricting our gatherings together to less than 10 people and restaurants are closed and, and uh, schools are closed and businesses are closed and theme parks are closed and, and yes, even churches are closed. But the church is wide open to spread the gospel. We're following government restrictions on gatherings, but, and that's a good social responsibility. And we are keeping a physical distance, but we are not keeping a spiritual distance because we're going to do everything we can as a church, as the people of God, to minister His grace, His love, and hope to people all around the world. This is a pandemic, and many, of course, are anxious. Some are alone, afraid, uh, even in a panic, but we are in this together. And no matter where you are right now, you are not alone, first of all, because we know that God never leaves us or forsakes us. God is in the room. God is in the place you are right now. And I'm praying that you will experience the Spirit of the living God in your life in these days. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, His presence is alive, alive in you. And nothing, nothing will separate. You may feel separated right now, but nothing will separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ. He is with you. I promise you, according to God's living word, He is with you right now. And even in the face of death itself, Jesus has conquered death and hell and the grave. And because Christ lives, we know that no matter what happens in our lives, be it sickness or death or sorrow or grief or pain, that we are with Him and He is with us. Now, as I said, this COVID virus, COVID-19, is like a war. It's a spiritual war. And our weapons 
are the Word of God, the testimony of Jesus, prayer, and yes, the church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a powerful weapon in the hand of God. And so God wrote letters, gave letters to his apostles and others uh, uh, who preached the word of God and gave us his word in order that we might fight back, fight back against our fears, fight back against our anxieties and fight forward in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is so important that together we move mountains because we have a mountain moving God. It's so important that we continue to fight the good fight of faith. So take your Bible and look at Ephesians, the fourth chapter, Ephesians chapter four. And I want to show you in particular, verse three, that we are to be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of of peace. I love that word eager. It means that we will strive, we will endeavor, we will work hard to maintain the unity of the church in the bond of peace. Just like any relationship, it takes work. A marriage takes work. A family relationship takes work. And it's going to take work together through these days, through the years, that we will maintain the unity of the church in the bonds, in the bonds of Christ and the peace that he gives. And so in this passage, it's a fantastic passage. It begins in verse 1 with Paul, a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the second time he's mentioned this, that he is a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he was not a prisoner of Rome, though Rome arrested him. He was not a prisoner of his circumstances, but he was a prisoner of Christ. He was in the hands of God. Christ was holding him. The day that the Apostle Paul met Jesus and arrested him on the road to Damascus, he was under the care and the control of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You may feel like Paul, that you are a prisoner right now. I know some people, you feel locked down and shut out right now. You're, you're maybe even freaking out that you can't be around your family or be around your friends. But the fact is, if you are a prisoner right now, if you are in Christ, you are a prisoner of Christ. And therefore, as the prisoner of Christ, you are a, as the Scripture says, a prisoner of hope. Because we, the church, Believers and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are dispensers of hope. Dispensers not of dope, but of hope. The lasting hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you this, God has a plan in all of these circumstances. We don't know what it is yet. We don't know God's plan in all of this, but I know that God has a plan, not only for the world and a plan for the United States of America, but God has a plan for you and your life and your family. And over the next weeks, days, we're going to discover what God's plan really is. We're talking about together in Christ. And you know what that is? That is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the people. We are the church. Now, in your Bibles, the the word church, let's just get this on the table right now. The word church means uh, called out ones, people who are called out. Called out by who? Called out by God. Called out to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. The moment you are in Christ, you are in His church. And that's a big C. It's the worldwide global body of Christ. And so that is the church, the called out ones of God. We have been called to follow Jesus. And as Christ followers, we are therefore identified with Christ and we are identified with the church. Remember this, the church is not a business. The church is not a building, but the church is the body of of the Lord Jesus Christ, the body of Christ. It's an illustration, taking the human body and illustrating the body of Christ, which is the church with hands and feet and legs and eyes that that do the will of God. Now, the Scripture says that Christ is the head of this body. That's, That's a great thing. 
Christ is the head of the church, the head of the body of Christ. And that means the church is never going to go down. The church is never going to go under. I know there are fears today regarding businesses and the economy and all the rest. Even concerns, deep concerns about the church. How will churches survive this? We're praying for small churches and all churches, but I'm, I'm thinking especially about those many small churches that are out there that are having difficulty thinking about surviving through this next couple of two or three weeks or however long uh, these restrictions last. And yet I know this, pastor and church members out there, and let me remind you to pray for your pastor, to pray for your church, to keep giving to your local church. But I know this, to all the churches who are preaching the gospel, who are Christ-centered, Bible-preaching churches, I know this, that the only way the church is going down is if Jesus the head goes under. And I'm telling you, the head, the Christ, the Savior, he's not going under. And therefore, the church is not going under either. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And if the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church, then I guarantee you this germ, this COVID-19 will not prevail against his church. The church includes people around the world. Right now, I'm speaking to Christians and therefore the church around the world. Online, we have over 70 countries who join us each week for worship and the Word of God all across America from every state. So if you are a Christian, if you're a, a believer in Christ, you are a part of this church. We are in this, all of us together. It's the universal church, but most of the time when the Bible talks about the church. It's not talking about church big C, the global uh, church, but it's talking about little c, local church, local church. And that means every person should identify who follows Jesus, should identify, become a member of a local church, a local church. Uh, Billy Graham used to say, everybody has three homes or should have three homes. You ought to have a heavenly home. You need to know that you're on your way to heaven because of what Christ has done for you. You need to have a family home. And the Bible says God sets the solitary in families. You may be a family of just one or a few. You may be a big family. But God has given us a family, even if it's a family of friends. And that family of friends is the local church. So you ought to have a church home. You ought to be a part of the family of God, the body of God. Christ. And so today, today, how are we going to hang together, hold together, and grow together during these times of uncertainty? Number one, we are in this together because we are believing together. We are believing together. In verses four through six, there are some essentials, some distinctives mentioned here that keep the church together. It is the the confession of our faith, the, the foundation of our faith is mentioned here. And he talks about what we believe together because we are not the church just because we're friends or live in the same community. We are the church all across the world and locally because we have made a great confession of faith. And included in that confession, Paul says, we are one body, we are one spirit, we have one hope, we are one Lord, we are one faith, we are one baptism, and we, are, we have one God the Father. We are one, and it is in this oneness of truth. It is the truth of, the, of God's Word. It is the confession of our faith, who we are, what we believe in Christ, that will keep us together. We are together because we are believing together. We have put our faith and trust in Christ. We have believed in Him. We have followed Him in obedience. And therefore, in Christ, we are together. That's what's going to keep us together in these days. It is the Word of God and the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have a confession of faith. We have our core beliefs as a church. In fact, you could go to our website, Prestonwood.org, and there you can find our statement of beliefs, our confession 
of faith. It's very important that churches not just be together because they have an affinity group or an affinity to one another, but we're together in Christ. This is our common ground. We have one Lord, and therefore we have one life together. We believe in God the Father. We believe in God the Son. We believe in the Holy Spirit who makes us one. These are the essentials that bring us together. That's why so many of you joined around watching on your screen today, watching on your tablet, because you are a believer. Some of you are seeking a meaningful faith, a real faith in your life, and today is going to be the day of salvation. You know, in a church, uh, even a smaller church, you don't know everyone's name. I know at Prestonwood, we couldn't begin to know everyone's name in our church. But there is one name that brings us all together, and His name is Jesus. His name is the one name because this is His body. And therefore, because we are believing together, the second thing is, you may want to write these things down. This is what keeps us together as we are endeavoring, as we are, are, are guarding the unity in the bonds of peace as, we are, peace, as we are staying together, we believe together, therefore we are bonding together. We are bonding together. And the idea of endeavoring and bonding together is going to require effort. It's going to require energy. We're going to have to work at it this, these days. But I'm so thankful for the way that Christians all across the world, America, and in our church are doing whatever is necessary, endeavoring, guarding the fellowship of the church and keeping us together. We really do need each other. Right now, you need God's church. We need God's people. Now, right now, there are limitations on being together, but we can be together just like we are right now, digitally. Uh, and we can be together visually. And we want to stay together in every way that we can through preaching the Word of God, through ministry of the church. And ministry is happening in all kinds of ways. I'm so happy about the way that our people at Prestonwood are looking for ways to share Christ. He mentions three virtues here that keep bonding us together. What bonds us together? What, what keeps this relationship together? Well, he said first in humility. In humility. It is humility that causes us to serve one another. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. He bowed, he bent before his disciples and washed feet. And he said, as I've washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. You know, we're spending time, a lot of time, washing hands these days. I know I am, and, and uh, using the hand sanitizer. We're washing hands, but we don't need to forget in these times to be washing feet. And that is in any way possible, we are to serve one another, beginning with our own families. You may be feeling cooped up with your kids and your family right now, but this is a time to love one another and serve your family. We live in a selfie world. And we need to make sure that we use this opportunity to humble ourselves before God. In fact, I believe one of the things that God is doing in these uncertain times is humbling His people. Bringing us to the end of ourselves to know that in Christ we have everything and more, much more than we need. We need to serve one another in humility. And then he speaks of this virtue of gentleness or meekness, to do it with meekness. Now, meekness sounds like weakness to some, but it's not weakness. It is power or strength under control. Every man ought to be a velvet-covered brick. You ought to be tender, strong on the inside, tender on the outside. Be a gentleman. And we all should practice this virtue of gentleness or strength or power under control. Jesus himself, who was strong, mighty God, he said, I am gentle and humble in heart. So what keeps people together, whether you're working on your family, your marriage, and certainly the church, it is humility and it is gentleness, also patience. He says there in verse 2, once again, patience, which means bearing with one another in love. I'll tell you this about love. Love is patient, and love is kind, and love is forbearing, and love will do whatever it takes. Love always finds 
away. I was blown away this week when I watched the story of a man by the name of Bob in Connecticut and his love for his wife of 67 years. I brought the clip for you just so you can see it for yourself. The governor banned all visitors from nursing homes for 30 days, but that could not keep this couple from seeing each other. Could you read my sign? Could you read my sign? I've loved you 67 years and still do. Happy anniversary. That's the sign Bob Shellard spent the week making for his bride. I wish you could be with us, though, huh? But this is a bittersweet anniversary. It's the first time they're celebrating apart. His wife, Nancy, is in a Stafford Springs nursing home, and with the coronavirus, no visitors are allowed. Before the ban, Bob came to see her every day. It makes me feel bad because I... I wanted her down with me, and I know she can't. They married in their early 20s and over the years raised four children. For their kids, their life together is an inspiration. I can only hope that I have half as much as what they have shared over the years. Regardless of the situation, she's always smiling, and there's just a sweetness to the two of them and what they share. So today, standing outside Nancy's second floor window, Bob brought balloons and that sign, not letting anything stop him from seeing his bride and celebrating. She stood inside, waving back, blowing kisses, and telling the staff she felt like a queen. Nancy has Alzheimer's and dementia, so her husband worries she may not remember he was there. But it's still important that he was. I wouldn't want anybody else. I don't think she could put up with anybody else like me. And may we all be as lucky as Bob and Nancy. Happy anniversary to them. <laughs> what a beautiful picture. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. That's more than a thousand words in that video right there. And here's the point. Love is forbearing. In other words, love fights through. Love finds a way. He said, Nancy, <laughs> she could be the only one that would put up with me. That's what love does. And the reporter said, we should be so lucky. But let me tell you, luck had nothing to do with that. That's love. The love that always finds a way. And as the church of Jesus Christ, we always find a way to love people. And we're going to find a way in these days to minister to people through text, through signs, Maybe just a little sign or just a smile or whatever we can do to encourage you and, yes, bond together. There's one final thing I want to say about this, this staying together and that we're in this together and we're going to get through this together. Not only are we believing together, not only are we bonding together, but we are building together. We're building together how? By the use of spiritual gifts. Verse 7 says, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. The scripture goes on to say that Christ ascended, and when he ascended, he gave gifts, spiritual gifts to his church. These gifts, these spiritual gifts given to us by the Holy Spirit enable us to serve others and to serve the church. And everyone has a gift. These gifts are not toys to play with. They are tools to work with to build the church. So we are building the church together through spiritual gifts and by spiritual leaders. He goes on to talk about the leaders that God has given the church in verse 11, apostles and prophets and evangelists and shepherds and teachers. That is pastor teachers. It is the role of the pastor teachers, those of us who preach and teach God's Word and lead God's churches to feed the flock of God, to preach the Word of God, to build up the body. Frankly, the reason that many churches are on decline is because there is an absence of the teaching and preaching of God's Word. Go to a church where Christ is exalted and the Bible is preached because that's the way the church grows. And you know, it is time for us now to grow up and to grow stronger in the Lord. It's the church's responsibility to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And we are building together with Christ the kingdom of God. And we can do it by spreading the good news. This virus is contagious, extremely contagious, the coronavirus. 
virus. But let me tell you something that is also contagious, even more contagious, eternally more contagious, and that is a Christian full of the Spirit of God, a Christian full of the Word of God, with the testimony of Christ, the witness of Jesus in your life. You are a contagious Christian, and how great will it be when we, on fire with the Holy Spirit, begin to spread this good news of Jesus Christ to our friends, to our family, and you know, I believe that's happening right now. Do you know Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you a believer? Back in the Old Testament, there was a deadly viper, not a virus, but a viper. The children of Israel were in the desert, and these poisonous serpents, snakes, were destroying the camp of Israel. And so God, as he always does in the midst of uh, a crisis, he raises up a solution. And he told Moses and the leader of Israel to take a pole and on the pole put a brass serpent and to hold up that pole. And all those who looked to the pole with a brass serpent would live. Those who refused to look would die in their sins. Fast forward, millenniums later, Jesus was having a conversation with uh, an old man by the name of Nicodemus who was on a search for meaning, a search for, he was a religious man, but he knew he needed more. And so he came to Jesus and he spoke to Jesus and that's when Jesus said, Nicodemus, you must be born. Again, Nicodemus said, how is that possible? Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. And then Jesus went on to explain with an illustration. He said, I am that serpent lifted up in the wilderness. He said, just as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness. And they said, look and live. I am the serpent. And if the son of man be lifted up, he will draw all unto himself. We are lifting up the Son of Man today. And if you look to Him and believe in Him and trust in Him, you will live. No virus, no viper, no sin will keep you in judgment, but rather you can be saved from the wrath that is to come, from the judgment that is come. We're all dying. One of the things that we've learned about this virus is how mortal we really are. There are statistics that I read, and of course people die every day, and there's a statistic that you need to know. One out of one persons die. That means you, me, all of us, it is appointed unto one to die and then the judgment. So we're all going to die, but Jesus is the solution for death. And every virus, every sinful thing, he is the solution. So I'm calling on you today. I'm lifting up Christ today. And I'm saying, look and live. You may be a small child, watching this in your home. This is a time, you know, I came to Jesus as a little boy, as a little six-year-old child. I looked, and I've been living ever since. But no matter, you may be an older person like Nicodemus. You may be feeling alone, but Jesus is with you, and we're lifting up Christ. Look and live. Look and live. Look and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, what does that mean? It means this. Admit that you have sinned and broken God's commandments, and we've all sinned. We've all sinned. And therefore, we need a Savior. And then, not only admit it and acknowledge it, but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and you will be saved. Look and live. Believe and be saved. Believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus. And then confess Him as your Lord and Savior. And you can do that right now. In fact, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And in this prayer, You can look and live. You can receive Christ into your life. You can believe. You can become a child of God right now. Just pray like this. Lord Jesus, I know I have broken your commandments. I know I have sinned. But I believe and trust in you. I want to turn from my sin and follow you all the days of my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Master. Be my God. Give me the strength by the power of your spirit to live for you. And from this day forward, I want to walk with you as your child. Are you praying that prayer right now? Are you trusting in Christ? Will you look? Will you live? 
We're so thankful for so many who are responding this very moment. And there's a way that you can confess Christ, even though we're not together, digitally, you can confess your faith in Christ openly by simply, if you're watching on Preston Wood uh, Facebook, Facebook Live, you can just write in, type in J-E-S-U-S, or on Prestonwood.live, you can just, you'll see there a little hand, you can click it there, and you can basically raise your hand right there to say, right now, I'm trusting Christ as Lord and Savior. Will you do that? Will you let us know there's someone standing by right now to help you with your decision, your decision to answer your questions, if you have questions, and if you will check, click in, if you'll let us know of your decision to follow Christ, a couple of things can happen. One, I want to send you my book, New Life in Christ. And this is a book about what it means to begin the walk with Christ and then to grow in your life in Christ. And it's about six or seven chapters, and I would love for you to have it. It's free. Just, uh, just let us know your information. And then we have a New Believer's Bible full of notes that will help you develop your faith as a disciple of Christ, understand more fully what has happened when you receive Christ in your life. And we will also send this to you absolutely free if you will let us know who you are, that you're trusting in Christ, and give us that information. We are so excited about the potential of the days ahead. The church, let the church rise. Let us rise to the challenge of our times. This is our moment. We are about 20 plus days to Easter, and I can tell you we're going to have the most incredible, the most unforgettable Easter service our church has ever had. We're going to be providing content for you along the way. We're going to have a Wednesday evening service this week. And uh, so more about that. We'll get in touch with you. Get on our social media platforms and connect with us in every way that you can. We'll let you know. We're going to be putting out videos and, and things for children and things for students. We are going to stay connected. Why? Because we are going to get through this together. And we are better together. We are stronger together. We are all in this victorious together. God bless you, and we'll see you the next time.